Hey guys, FM Von Manstein here, and I am doing a uh, Men of War Tactics video. So this is going to be something a little bit different than uh, what I'd normally be doing. But I'm just going to basically talk about tactics this game. Uh, so yeah, this is due to uh, a request. If you guys remember my last video, I was just kind of asking for some requests. And so uh, one of the requests was that I do a video on tactics. So here it is. This is a video on tactics. And just going to say this now, I'm not playing against anybody. I'm just playing against myself. So i um, just going to talk about tactics a little bit. So this is just general tactics. Now, in the battle zones, uh, for one-on-one -on -one at least, or two-versus-two, two, the most important thing is just getting to the uh, flag points fast. That's what you want to do. You want to get there fast. So as you can see, I just brought up a Puma very quickly so I could just get to this point right here. Just did that quickly so I can just make sure that I can bring up infantry so my infantry can take it later. Because, um... Like here, I'll just rush my infantry over to this spot as fast as I can. And then I'll have a, a Puma over here too. And it's important, at least in my opinion, you should probably always get um, some sort of armored unit at the beginning so that uh, if the enemy you know, also has an armored unit, then you can counter that efficiently. And the Puma, it's really, it's pretty good. Because, you know, all, all light armored units... They out of the Puma is probably the best in terms of firepower because it has the 50 millimeter KWK 39 gun, which is it's good because if you look at um, the Puma here, it can penetrate almost 100 millimeters of armor at 10 meters. So that's that's pretty good, you know. So that's it's definitely the best in my opinion because it's pretty fast too. It's pretty mobile. I mean, all armored vehicles are very fragile and everything, but the Puma is probably the best, and it's probably it's the best for flanking maneuvers, which is really that's my signature tactic, my trademark, the uh, flanking maneuver. I like to just go around with Pumas and fl outflank people because it works well, and you can do the same thing with tanks, but just make sure that you're using a faster tank because if you're using a slower tank, it might not work out too well. But um, yeah, this is just a basic general early game um, take because you have early game you have to get your forces out fast you have to get them out across the map you have to take spawn points fast you know it's just the first person to go out and get the spawn points is gonna have an advantage because even if you can't hold them you're still like building up a small lead you know so that's just I place importance over that because also um, it's hard to take a spawn point after it's already been taken, you know, like if s somebody owns a spawn point, then it's hard to take it back, at least in my opinion, because the longer you wait, the more fortified that position com becomes, and then you have to use rocket artillery, otherwise there's like no other way to dislodge them. So, so now I'm going to move on to just, uh, some tank tactics now, just so you guys can... You know, because this is a big part of the game, tank tactics, you know. So, I'm just, again, I'm playing against myself, so you can just see here. So, for example, let's say this is an enemy tank. So, let's just pretend this is just, whatever, just an enemy tank here. So, you have an enemy tank, and he's sitting over here, and he's threatening your spawn point. Because the tank, he outranges your infantry. So, right now, my infantry over here, they're not in a position to take out this tank. Because if they advance, they're probably going to get mowed down. Unless I try and, like, go really sneaky and, you know, move this infantry guy, like, over there and just, like, walk over here and then walk over here. But that's probably not going to work out. So, I'm bringing up a King Tiger right now. Now, in the case of having a King Tiger, I don't really have to worry about not being able to kill this tank. But, for example, let's say I had another tank of somewhat equal um, strength. So, making a direct assault, it's not your best option. Um, cause you don't want to risk losing your tank. So, let's just, so let's just, th obviously, yeah, I, I'd kill that thing really easily. But if I didn't have a tank that was good enough, something you can do, you just, um, pull your tank, like, far enough back that you can still, like, shoot at him and get his attention, but not be, like, threatened, threatened by, like, far enough away that you can shoot at it, but you're no, you're not going to do any damage to him, and he's not going to do any damage to you. So you're basically just, like, exchanging fire, not really doing anything. So once you get his attention, you just outflank it. It's really that simple. You just bring up a Puma or another armored vehicle, like a, 
I don't know, a Greyhound, an anime Greyhound, or, um, I don't know. It, they, Russia has a bunch of, you know, really, really crappy little tanks, which aren't that great. Like, Russia's not that great at the whole outflanking thing. I mean, you can do it T-34s, but whatever. So, yeah, I'm just going to take some shots at this thing now. Let's, yeah, so, there we go. It's dead. It's, the, it's, it's that simple. You just bring up a Puma, and then you shoot it. But you also have to be aware... A smart player, they're going to have infantry sort of guarding their tanks and everything. So that's one thing that you have to be careful of um, when you're outflanking. So you, sometimes it'll just completely not work because if they've got a, a bazooka guy over here, he's just going to take out your puma or whatever. But, you know, it's a risk you're willing to tank because uh, just attacking it frontally, that's not the best thing to do. Um, let's just move on to infantry now. Now, there are a lot of different types of infantry, and personally, when I started playing Men of War, I always used SMG infantry, but riflemen, they've got a really good advantage, because they can make sandbags, right, they can make those, which are really good, because, um, one, riflemen outrange SMG infantry, so, if you just have SMG infantry, and your opponent is riflemen, he's just gonna take out all your SMG infantry, and your SMG infantry can't even shoot back, you know, because they, they're outranged. So that's an important thing to do. And again, the sandbags, it does help. But I'm going to tell you right now, do not go like this, okay? It might be like, you know, easy to do, but do not set your sandbags out just in one straight line because then you're incredibly vulnerable to uh, HE shells coming from artillery and tanks. Do not do that ever. What you want to do, you want to make one, and then you want to make two. You know, just like, you have to spread them out, otherwise you're just going to, like, get owned, okay? You can't just cluster them. That's just the fundamental rule of warfare. Don't cluster your men up, because I'm going to give you an example right now of what happens when you cluster all your forces up. Because this has happened to so... I've seen this happen to so many people. I've done this to other players, because, you know, they foolishly cluster your, uh, your troops up. So... Really, if you find that there is an enemy position that is hard to defeat, one of the main reasons why that might be is they just have a bunch of troops clustered around one spawn point. You can't even get close to it. So this is it's important that you spread your guys out in a, where, in a position where they have a good field of fire, where they can just, um, you know, they've got good range and vision. They can just see all over the place. You don't want to have them clustered. You want to have them guys there, guys there, guys there. Spread them out so they can see the enemy. Put them on a hill or something. You know, good fields of fire. Fundamental, you know, military tactic. So this is what happens. I'm sure this is, you know, kind of obvious, but this is what happens when you cluster up your men. You get bombed by rocket artillery. So the, right there, my force has gotten pretty much decimated by the rocket artillery. See? Completely destroyed. Gone. The infantry's dead. The Puma's destroyed. The King Tiger's got its tank, uh, its turret, and its tread de uh, destroyed. So now that spawn point right there is pretty much just, it can't do shit. That's basically it. So it's important that you spread your guys out. I'm sure for many of you this is pretty obvious, but I'm just going to point that out there. So that's how you basically dislodge your enemy. You just have to bomb the shit out of it. And this is really simple stuff, but a lot of players don't even realize this. Artillery, it's so important to the game, because it's just the easiest way to dislodge an uh, opponent. Like mortars. Mortars can change the battle so easily. You bring up a mortar to defend, you bring up a mortar to attack. Either way, it works well. So you bomb them, then you send in the uh, tanks. But make sure you have infantry too, because if you just send in tanks to attack... They get swarmed by infantry with uh, anti-tank grenades and bazookas. You just send in infantry in by themselves. They're going to get mowed down by heavy machine guns and some small arms fire. It's just how it works. You know? You have to have efficient uh, all-arms coordination. That's the only way to win, uh, be good at this game. You have to use all arms, everything at your disposal. Um, and now on to, I just like, quickly like to talk about um, self-propelled guns. So, yeah, let's take the Stug for an example. And the Stug is really good. Not so much in this game. I don't find that self-propelled guns are that good just because they can't pivot, you know? They have to turn themselves. So as soon as their track is dead, they're kind of, like, useless. But, you know, I guess they're cheaper than tanks and still can have just as good firepower. So they're all right, you know? If you have them well hidden and stuff, they're good. But you have to know where to place them. Like, up here, on this hill, this is the perfect place. Like, uh, it's obvious, kind of. Like, you know, height is a definitive advantage. You put a tank up there, you get infantry around the base, but don't cluster them too much again. And 
yeah. So I'm sorry this video has been kind of short because I only had 10 minutes to do it. Um, yeah, but I just wanted to, you know, talk about this sort of thing. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys.